the first year student, you are commencing on a lifelong journey of learning. This PowerPoint will provide you with a clear understanding of what the standards are, as well as the role of a midwife. This presentation will highlight standard one and two. Each of these standards discuss the foundation of midwifery practice as being woman-centred and establishing a partnership with women to deliver evidence-based care. As you grow in your midwifery skills and knowledge, you'll be able to naturally incorporate these standards into your practice. Midwifery standards for practice is useful in providing a framework for all midwives under which they can work. It enables the most effective and appropriate care to women from all kinds of contexts. These standards can also be viewed by women, other health professionals or consumers so that education, regulation and collaboration can be managed more effectively. Hopefully this will help you start implementing good midwifery practice as a student. Some key features of Standard 1 include providing evidence-based care, women-centred care as well as self-reflection to improve safety and quality care of, for women. Women-centred care encompasses many aspects of midwifery practice that promotes health and well-being. Each woman has different values, needs and ideas about pregnancy, labour and childbirth. This is very important to keep in mind as you are learning new skills. Ultimately, the type of care and support the woman needs is defined by her needs and background. Encouraging skin to skin and breastfeeding immediately after a caesarean section is an example of providing women-centred care, as women might not be aware of what is allowed in operating theatres. Providing women-centred care with evidence-based research and information encourage them encourages them to take part in decision-making and their care plan. The foundation to all care provided for women should be centred about what is important to them, and as a student taking the time to ask, them what their needs are will help you provide the best care for them. Caring for women whilst ignoring evidence-based research leads to unsafe and inferior quality of care. As a midwifery student, it is important to start building a bank of knowledge involving evidence-based practices. Women will have a better understanding and trust the care you provide for them more if you explain the reason as to why it is the most safe and beneficial care. Continuity of care has been shown to lead to greater outcomes for women and their babies. Using the available research to explain to women the benefits of having a midwifery student during their pregnancy, birth and postpartum period will empower them and may lead to better outcomes. Exploring the environment in which women labour and birth in can improve the outcome of women's satisfaction with the care. As a student, offering women a birthing ball, a bean bag, dimming the lights is a very practical and achievable task when working alongside a midwife and delivery ward. As midwives and midwifery students, it is important to be aware of what motivates and facilitates our care for women. According to Phoenix research, fear is a major factor that influences the way we practice and can be overcome through motivation theory. In the journal article by Wayne, reflection in midwifery practice has been shown to be beneficial to learning and for the development of critical thinking. Reflection on practice is especially helpful to partake in as a student since new skills and concepts constantly arise while studying at university and being in hospitals on placement. Keeping a journal of birth stories or difficult placement days will will enable you to reflect on that situation and improve your practices. Is it as, this is important to continue doing as a registered midwife also. Not only does it improve skills and midwifery practice, but it improves the safety and quality of care to women. Standard 2.2 alludes to the important role of midwives to provide the best evidence-based care in a respectful yet professional partnership. As described by MacDonald 2017, the intimate space of midwifery is characterised by mutual trust and respect between midwives and women. You will be able to truly partner with women and develop ongoing trust through the midwifery continuity of care experiences, and hopefully understand that this partnership allows women to feel empowered and confident as mothers. By supporting women to trust in physiological birth processes, midwives have the capacity to increase women's confidence in their own abilities and choices. As a student, you will be privileged to be with vulnerable women as a supportive presence that can truly make a difference for each woman and family.
As you're trained to be a midwife, providing care that respects dignity, privacy and confidentiality, as outlined by Standard 2.3, is extremely important. You will regularly be incorporating this standard into your practice through gaining consent before physical examinations such as abdominal palpations and VEs. As discussed by Jackson 2014, prior to touching a woman, a proper explanation of the proposed examination and their significance should be provided. You may also be caring for women with a history of sexual abuse or FGM, where respectful care aligned with this standard is required to reduce distress and anxiety and help these women create positive connections to their bodies. As discussed by Axel 2018, by allowing room for conversations that advocate for informed choice, we allow women to feel heard and at the centre of our care. When immersed in the clinical environment, you will come across a diverse range of women that have different cultural beliefs, experiences and needs. Standard 2.5 alludes to the importance of providing non-judgmental, non-biased care in order to be woman-centred. Cultural safety, as described by Mandarin Miller 2016, is the ability to accommodate differences in a caring space where people feel able to safely express their identity. You can incorporate this standard by respectfully screening for women who identify as Aboriginal during a booking-in visit. This standard may also involve finding appropriately translated antenatal material for women from non-English speaking backgrounds or engaging with interpreters. Importantly, reflecting on your own culture and beliefs is essential before you can contribute to an environment where women and their families feel culturally safe. Collaborative practices outlined in Standard 2.8 is essential to the role of the midwife in the context of a multidisciplinary team. As a first year student, you will already be involved in collaborating with midwives and other health professionals. For example, this could include communicating the findings from your palpation of contractions to the midwife or paging a clinical review for a hypertensive reading on the maternity ward. Helmund 2015 describes the concept of trust, communication, shared expertise and a respectful attitude as prerequisites to positive collaboration between maternity care professionals. This standard is also alluded to by Rayner 2014 who describes collaboration between midwives as mutual support built on compassion and solidarity. Ultimately, collaboration is crucial to providing woman-centred care and it will improve as your skills and knowledge develop. The NMBA standards are designed to guide your practice as you navigate the clinical environment and develop your skills and knowledge to become a registered midwife. The NMBA standards, particularly standard 1 and 2, clearly describe the role of the midwife as a safe, woman-centred care practitioner who provides evidence-based care to support the well-being of women and their families. The standards can help you understand the prison principles of cultural safety, continuity of care and primary health care which are fundamental to practice. Overall, the NMBA standards are one of many helpful tools that can support you and guide you on your midwifery journey.